Hi, it's Heather. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me again tonight. So tonight, um, I know I share a lot of different things on this channel, whether it be, you know, readings or meditations or tips on, you know, relaxation, stress reduction. Uh, and today I wanted to share with you some original stuff I've been working on um, for one of my uh, next books that I want to put out. So um, this is from a book of poems and short stories that I've been working on. And um, the first one I wanted to share is, is, is short. Um, it's a short little poem that I was going to actually share, I believe it was last night at an open mic poetry night. Um, at a shop that I was really looking forward to. And, you know, of course, due to the state of the world, um, we're not able to do that right now. So, but I still wanted to share it. And, um, and it's called The Memory Forest. And then another um, short poem that I wrote that's called Brave Hawk and a Cave. So again, these are um, new original poems that, um, that I wrote. So, um, but I, I, I'm thankful that I can share these with you tonight. So thank you for being here and for listening. So the first is the memory forest. There is a magical forest down the lane. You can visit anytime, whether at peace or in pain. When you step on its soil, it sends not chills up your spine, but instead offers you stories from the beginning of time. You'll hear whispers. They sometimes laugh, sometimes cry. You can even call to those you have a personal tie. No shoes are allowed for the roots like your toes to better upload what you wish you could know. Look up at the branches, see how they shield and protect. No one who comes to the memory forest will suffer neglect. It's the keeper of secrets and the collector of souls. It's the place to come to hear the best stories told. And that is the memory forest. A wonderful little place that I wish really existed. And next is the little short story and poem called Brave Hawk and the Cave. There once was a boy who lived in a cave. One morning the tide came in with a giant swollen wave. It pushed him in deeper. The sky was no more. He could no longer see what was once his door. So he ventured into the cavern. It was long as it was dark. With his torch, he saw written on the walls, there were marks. There were spirals and stick men. What stories they told. One was of a great warrior, so brave and so bold. He remembered the tales that were spun by his mother. They'd sit by the fire, snuggled close to each other. She'd tell them of battles and dragons and heroes. They told tales every night until came their enemies and foes. Their tribe forced to scatter he lost his mother's hand. He ran as fast as he could away from their sacred land. And he found himself here, cold and alone. On his face, the weather and time had certainly shown. Too scared to venture out, he stayed close and caught fish. To see his mother and family again was his biggest and greatest wish. He had vowed to go back to 
to avenge his tribe and make amends. He had been so lonely, but made a new family of friends. Now bats told him stories. A white fox came and stayed. Such a quiet and safe new life he had made. He knew he must leave. The tide would soon recede. The markings reminded him of other stories his mother would weave. She said he too could be brave, a warrior so strong. He felt he must act now and not prove her wrong. He took soot from his fire and painted war stripes on his face. He couldn't believe he was finally going to leave this place. So he gathered his courage and waited for his chance. He said farewell to the bats, but the fox spun and danced. She was happy to leave the cave and join him on a quest. She stayed by his side as they journeyed back west. The boy was scared yet excited. The sky was so bright. He didn't know what he'd find but he was ready to fight. For a week, they followed the river and slept under the stars. In the moonlight, he could see both their hardened scrapes and scars. One morning as dawn broke and they peeked over the hill, to his glee, he saw newly built dwellings and their totem was there still. They waited a long while, observing and searching for kin. His heart was as full as it could be because he knew the enemy did not win. He and his fox crept tenderly towards the tribe. When they got close, someone saw them he could not describe. He didn't know their face, but they certainly knew his. They threw their arms up and shouted, he's back, it's Catan, it is. The people came running, they cheered and they cried. Then he saw his mother, full of heartbreak and pride. You found your way back, my brave little hawk. She said as she hugged him, he could barely talk. They cried and they danced till he got dizzy, they spun. He felt his days as a man had just only begun. They gathered around the fire, his fox in his lap. In his mother's arms, they both took a nap. The battle was not done. They said they'd be back. They called him Brave Hawk now. He could help them attack. His journey was long and he was so glad to be home. But in the coming days, he knew far he would roam. Until then, he stayed tucked in his mother's arms and told tales by the fire of his own newly spun yarn. Thank you for letting me share that with you tonight. Um, that was Brave Hawk in the Cave and the short poem, The Memory Forest, that uh, will be in my uh, new book to come out hopefully fairly soon. I do have a lot more time to write right now, so I will be working on that even more. I have a lot more stories and, and things that are, that are already complete and more that I'm working on, so. I hope to share more with you soon and I hope that you are well, that you are safe, that you are honoring yourself and others and remembering your own self care and supporting and loving and taking care of yourself and each other. 
So I look forward to seeing you hopefully sooner rather than later. And I wish you well. Be good. Have pleasant dreams. And I'll talk to you soon. Good night.